everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you the sped up version of the Art Joy of Sharing channel live stream from June 21st. This is was called Stencil Fest and if you'd like to see the live version, I will link it in the description box below so that you can watch it live. Um, this is a, a show with Peg Robinson and myself on a different channel where we stream live every Thursday. And um, this time I am playing with my stencil club from Stencil Girl Stencils. These are called Rosie O. And there is a set of three, a 9x12, a 6x6, and a 4x4 that come in Stencil Club. Stencil Club, you get exclusive stencils. You get um, a bunch of content like behind the scenes stuff in a Facebook group. You get a 20% off coupon. The stencils just come each month. You don't pick what you want. You just uh, you get what you get. And this month it was these stencils. So I wanted to show how you can use all your deli paper, ghost prints, and roll-off papers, and extra paint that you've scraped onto papers to make some fun and colorful um, elements for an art journal page. This is a small dilutions journal that I've had for a long time. And I stenciled using Dina Wakely paints over these, these pieces of deli paper that I have that don't have much on them. They're just, you know, maybe they were a ghost print, maybe they were just scraped paint or, you know, whatever. And it's fun to jazz them up by using stencils. And so that's what I did. I used my artist sponges and a bunch of different colors of Dina Wakely uh, heavy body paint and stenciled over the top using these three stencils from the club and of course the stencils this month are flowers and so this page is going to be about flowers very bright crazy flowers so I tore around a bunch of the ones that I had stenciled and then I'm going to apply them to my page the page has been gessoed and um, prepared that way plus I put some tape in the middle in case I was going to use something wet that might seep down. I didn't end up using anything wet because I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium to apply. And I had a couple cleanup uh, pages where I was cleaning the stencil off. You can make some interesting patterns on a white piece of paper by just cleaning the stencil. Just, you know, rubbing a baby wipe over it and then the excess paint goes into the holes and you get another piece of pattern paper. So stenciling is very versatile that way. Um, so I used a couple of those pieces that had some nice yellow uh, pattern on it. Can't really see it that much on the video though, but it's there. <laughs> and then I used a couple of, well I used the 4x4 stencil which has this little part of it that looks kind of like stems. And then I used the 9x12 leaves and I just put those all over the background. Um, knowing that I'm going to collage all those flowers on top. I just wanted, I didn't want it to be white in the background and I wanted, I wanted something to be there um, to fill in all the spaces in between. So then I also used a little bit of yellow and just put some of the centers of the flowers. Uh, this 9 by 12 stencil, it can, um, it can be used together like you might do an outline flower and then put a solid flower on top or vice versa or you might put a different center on top of a solid flower and then of course the 6x6 has a whole bunch of centers which end up looking like kind of starburst patterns so they're fun. Um, I had different colors and I'm trying to work on my composition but I'm also talking at the same time and talking to Peg and flipping the the camera back and forth between us and so I don't think my composition turned out very nice on this page but it's basically just filled up to the brim <laughs> with flowers and that's what the whole page is about the bright riotous color of spring and summer flowers so I'm sticking these down using the uh, Legotex matte gel medium and a uh, one inch flat brush and I get that much done and then I'm like you know what there's not enough flowers so I tear a few out, more out and then when I put that big one on there I'm like that is so not balanced <laughs> at this place I realized 
that my composition was really bad. So then I started tearing some other ones out um, to kind of balance it out a little bit. Um, I got this yellow one. I add a couple more blue ones. Just because, yeah, it was it was off center and wacky and I don't know. Some of you might not be bothered, but it bothers me. So I think I I don't know. I don't know how many more I add, but I know I tear out some more to add them in. I think the problem I was having is that there was some very large areas of blue that were just kind of making this oval in the center of the page and it needed some out to the edges. And that's when I finally was okay with it when I added back in more blue flowers, more turquoise and blue flowers. It made it um, a little bit more balanced. So then my next thing to do was I decided that my background was too light and I wanted to just kind of uh, unify everything. So I got out some darker green and then uh, painted that in with the brush a little bit just to add some darker places. And then my final unification of it is to just take some white gesso and my finger and just go around and kind of add back in some dappled sunlight. And then it, it makes it feel as if, as if all the, the pieces that I glued on there are, are cohesive as opposed to just like blotches here and there of um, different colored flowers. You know what I'm saying? It's, it didn't look quite right until I unified everything. And it's fun to finger paint. I like to finger paint. Of course, get my hands really dirty, but <laughs> that's okay. So then as I was looking at it, I started to think that it looked like um, this artist named Alyssa Burke who lives on the Oregon coast and she does these huge murals of flowers and she does a lot of detail work and so I thought I would do some detail work um, adding in some acrylic paint with my fine liners. These are 20 gauge fine line bottles that have been filled with deco art media fluid acrylic paint in titanium white and Mars black and they're fun to play with. They make kind of a raised, um, a raised textural doodle on the page as opposed to using a pen. You could obviously do this with a, you know, black and white pens super easily. But this day I felt like doing this, adding some lines, some squiggles, some dots, um, just alternating between the black and the white. And it was a lot of fun. It takes a while to dry. The, you know, doing it with pens would have been a lot quicker, but it's just, I don't know. It's a fun thing to do. The fine liner bottles keep those little needles cleared by having this little um, tiny filament that you put back down into the needle when you close the bottle and then it screws tight. So I've never really had any clogging problems with them. Um, and I've had them for a long time. I don't use them that often, but I've had them for a long time. So I think the black needs to be refilled, so I'm going to need to order some more fluid black paint because I don't think I have anything. You could probably water down paint and do that, but I think having an already fluid paint gives you a better pigment load um, than watering it down because then you're diluting the pigment load. So had fun having a doodle fest and then um let's see here's what here's where i'm talking about how i'm going to finish it this is the end of the show but then i did i did film finishing it so um we kind of ran out of time we go for an hour and a half and then we're done so um i decided i wanted some of those stems back in i kind of lost those little stems that i put in the background so using the darker color again of green i add back in some of those stems. Just, I think they're an interesting shape. Like they really don't have much to do, that stencil really doesn't have much to do with flowers actually. It looks just more like kind of a random geometric stencil rather than, you know, if you just saw that stencil, you wouldn't say, oh, that's flowers. You would think it was something else. But then I decided to add a few more layers of color 
using the six by six stencil, which has basically the centers of flowers all over it. Um, it also kind of looks like a sunburst or starburst shape, but you can layer this over the top of some of the other flowers and add another color back into the center in the little um, vein lines and things that are in the center of the flowers. So I did that using some more of the pinks and, uh, and coral colors from the Dina Wakely paints. Just, just because I felt like I wanted to. <laughs> you never know what you might want to do. You might want some more pink. I don't know. So once that was dry, I added a rub on. Um, this rub on I got from Tuesday morning. So who even knows, um, you know, what brand it was or where it came from other than it's got a pretty big word. So I figured that would work on my page. And so I did, rubbed that really hard. And then in any places I messed up, I touched it up. Then I used a white Posca pin around the whole thing to kind of make it stand out a little bit. So I hope you've enjoyed this speed up version of the live stream. Again, I'll put the link below to um, all the materials I use to the live stream show to um, the live stream channel, all that stuff. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and um, turn on your notifications if you'd like to know when I release a fresh video for you pretty much every other day. And I think that all I'm going to do to this page to finish it off is to add a black pin border. I think that's it. And then this page will be done. Thanks for watching. That's it for me. Bye-bye.